Hi everyone, my name is Anna Zaharova, I'm a PhD student at Paul Scher Institute in Switzerland, and today I'd like to present my work called Interplay between Magnetism and Interface-Induced Effects in Ultrafin Manganites. First, I'm going to talk about LSMO lanthanum manganite in this doping 0 0.7, 0 0.3. So LSMO is a very famous material which has been widely studied over the decades, particularly in this doping due to Curie temperature, which is higher than the room temperature, and high spin polarization, LSMO is a very promising material for spin chronic application. However, their previous works report dramatic reduction of magnetic and metallic properties of LSMO in ultra thin limits that limits LSMO application. As you can see here at the figure of magnetization versus LSMO thickness given in unit cells, magnetization drops dramatically as a function of thickness, and already at three unit cells is not magnetic at all. It has been attributed to a magnetic dead layer. Its critical thickness is varying from seven unit cells to three unit cells, depending on the layer interface with LSMO. However, LSMO magnetism can be rescued. It's been found experimentally that in structure based on ruthenates and lanthanum manganites, lanthanum manganite remain magnetic down to one unit cells, as is shown here at the figure for, of the magnetization for three layers, SRO, LBMO, SRO, LBMO, SRO, LBMO, SRO, remain magnetic down to two unit cells. Strontium rutinate is ferromagnetic and metallic with Curie temperature around 160 Kelvin in bulk, and it undergoes thickness-driven metal to insulator transition at around four unit cells. It's further, further confirmed by XMCD at Marganese Edge by Kimonteze, that even one unit cells of LBMO can be magnetic sandwiched between two strontium rutinate layers, and it showed uh, remnants even at 130 Kelvin. I'll go back to XMCD data later to show my own result. Different possible explanation of magnetic dead layers effect have been discussed in previous studies. In this work, we aim to investigate the link between charge transfer and orbital reconstruction at lsmo SRO interface, in comparison to a single LSMO layer, to understand how LSMO benefits from proximity layer. In order to do that, X-ray absorption resonant techniques were used. The difference between circular left and right polarized light is linked to a magnetic spin and orbital moment via some rules, so we can investigate magnetic behavior of the thin films. An X-ray linear dichromism was used to identify the impact of orbital occupation on magnetism. So the difference between linearly, horizontally, and vertically polarized light. So the light polarized along AB or C axis of the samples show the difference in D orbital occupation. Qualitatively, if L2 points up, then 3Z square minus R square or outer plane orbital is more occupied. And if L2 points down, then in plane or X square minus Y square orbital is more occupied. In order to study the difference between two interfaces, between LSMO SR interface and single LSMO interface, B layers and single layer film were prepared by pulse laser deposition. Films were deposited on TO2 terminated strontium titanate. LSMO thickness was varied between 2 and 15 unit cells. SRO thickness was varied between 3 unit cells, so it's non magnetic and non metallic layer, and 20 unit cells as a ferromagnetic and metallic layer. When I talk further about experimental results, samples will be labeled as following. First number indicates LSMO thickness, and the second number indicates SRO thickness. And when it's indicated as zero, it means that it's an LSMO deposited directly on strontium titanate. So it's a single LSMO film. I start with magnetic properties to demonstrate if the B layers are really ferromagnetically more stable than a single layer. In order to do that, let's uh, look at the difference in XMCD at L3 and L2 ages of manganese as a function of uh, temperature measured in 50 millitesla filled after saturation at 6 tesla. So this difference is kind of a simple sum rule. So four unit cells, LSMO and STO for zero is non-magnetic, while four on three is magnetic, as well as four on 20 and two on 20. However, data set with 20 unit cells of SRO have opposite sign of the magnetic signal than four on three. In our geometry, negative signal indicates that the moments are oriented along the field or opposite as shown by arrows. 
Actually, it's a direct observation of anti-ferromagnetic coupling between two ferromagnets due to good enough Kanemir rule observed between LSMO and SRO before. Uh, we don't see such a coupling for four on three because three unit cells of SRO is non-magnetic. Period temperature for the B layer seems to be around 150 Kelvin. That is higher than what was observed for single LSMO film with similar thickness. Uh, such a TC increase and enhanced magnetism allows us to conclude that magnetic properties have been improved dramatically. Now, before I start to discuss origin of such a magnetic stability in heterostructure, I briefly discuss why LSMO is magnetic. Manganese exists in mixed valence state as a manganese 3 plus and 4 plus. We control this ratio by varying uh, we control this ratio by varying uh, lanthanum and stronzo doping respectively. Therefore, this ratio is an important parameter. Paramagnetism is mediated through double exchange between manganese 3 plus and manganese 4 plus ions through the oxygen. Manganese 4 plus has uh, T2G band half full, and uh, manganese 3 plus has one electron at EG orbital. And the generacy of the EG orbital could be broken by strain implementation or structural modification. And it results in different electronic occupation of x square minus y square and 3z square minus r square orbitals. It forms additional magnetic ground state of LSMO and competition of, uh, between anti-ferromagnetic and ferromagnetic states occur. So for us, orbital occupation is an important parameter. In our case, purely from the strain, we expect uh, that LSMO is tensile regardless of interface and uh, SRO is compressed. Previously, it has been shown by DFT calculation uh, in, that in LSMO SRO, LSMO occupation goes against strain expectation, unlike single LSMO. Here you can see that for single LSMO film, the orbital is almost equally occupied and uh, in-plane orbital is slightly more occupied than out-of-plane. For the B layers, we have a different picture. Out-of-plane orbital is much more occupied than the in-plane orbital. And then in order to investigate it experimentally, X-ray linear decrease was measured. At the top figure, you see XLD comparison between thin samples like 4, 0, and 4, 3, and thicker sample like 15, 3, and 25, 0. To, to see the difference between, uh, at the XLD between interface and something like bulk light. It's difficult to see the difference maybe by eyes, uh, and also we, We wanted to understand what's the sign of our XLD and what's the occupation. So we performed multiplet calculation uh, in STM4XS package for a better understanding. It will be shown on the bottom figure here. We get the correct signal mostly from Organis 3 plus. Therefore, we simulate a two spectra when single electron at EG occupies either out of plane or in plane orbital. And then we fit our experimental data as a linear combination of those two. From the fitting, we see that the thick single LSMO and thick LSMO and SRO behave differently. So it's a dark, uh, so it's a light blue and light red colors here. While 15.3 has out of plane preferential occupation, 25.0 shows in plane uh, preferential occupation. So it sort of agrees with DFT calculation. And for the ultra thin LSMO four unit cells, we have a different picture here. So for both of them, it's dark blue curve here. In order to see a bigger picture and to quantify all XLD results, I will use X parameter. It's calculated from XAS intensities for polarized light along C and AB axis. It expresses holes ratio at the EG orbital. It will be plotted as a function of LSMO and SRO thicknesses. First, on the plot, you see the values predicted by DFT calculation for single layer, 
of LSMO and for the B layers. Now let's look at the LSMO deposited on strontium rutinate. Here you see two series, LSMO deposited on three unit cells of SRO and SRO, uh, LSMO deposited on 20 unit cells of SRO. And you could see that they behave very similar. If we add LSMO single layer as a function of LSMO thickness on top, it's a red triangle here. We see again similar behavior. However, for the fixed samples, for example, here, uh, we see that uh, LSMO single layer matches the FT predictions as well as the B layers. The picture is different for four unit cells deposited on SRO or without SRO. Four unit cells has similar orbital occupation regardless of strain. A different orbital occupation for the LSMO in the B layer can be explained uh, by coupling with strontium rutinate. So strontium rutinate modifies electronic level of levels of LSMO. It couples manganese spins parallel to each other in the interfacial layer, recovering them to a regular ferromagnetic structure. While at the single LSMO anti-ferromagnetic C phase form, before we don't see any magnetic signal. However, orbital reconstruction cannot explain alone the reason of different magnetic properties we observed for the single and the B layers. So let's look at the charge transfer now. As I mentioned before, magnetic properties of LSMO are linked to this manganese 4 plus manganese 3 plus ratio. So let's look at the absorption spectra, which is technique sensitive to a valence state. Here you find comparison between manganese 4 plus reference sample 11-0, so it's a thick magnetic LSMO single layer, 4-0 as a non-magnetic very thin layer and four on three and four on 20. So the B layers, very thin LSMO on uh, strontium rutinate, magnetic and non-magnetic strontium rutinate. You can see that the peak position of four zero of manganese L3 changed towards left compared to the other sample. We can estimate that manganese valence there is nearly three compared to 3.3 expected, like in the other samples. It could tell us about different charge transfer at the interface between LSMO and STO and LSMO and SRO. At 11.0, probably due to a probing depth limitation, we do not see uh, that much of the interface. However, at 420 and 43 is the case, so we see the interface. Therefore, we can conclude that the charge transfer between LSMO and SRO could be a very important parameter influencing LSMO magnetism. And we see such a difference in charge transfer, uh, maybe due to the extended nature for the orbitals of ruthenium that hybridizes more with the oxygen and from manganese. So it causes such a, such a valence stability in the B layers compared to a single layers of LSMO in ultra thin limit. To sum up, we observed that in LSMO SRO B layer, magnetic dead layer can be reduced drastically or completely removed by insertion of the extra layers such as SRO layer, the double exchange mechanism can be preserved and antiferromagnetic instabilities between manganese ions suppressed. We demonstrated the importance of chemical environment as well as the strain. In ultra thin limit occupation is similar regardless of interface or strain. And that the, in case of the B layers, charge stability of the LSMO SRO interface as well as the orbital modification might be the key element, key elements to maintain LSMO magnetism. And now I thank you very much for your attention. That's uh, that's the end of my talk.